Bela Bean <laughs> is six months old. In her bed. She said, um, I don't even want to go putty. Just give me food right now. You get food in a minute. Oh my goodness. Oh, goodness. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Freya and Bela's channel. My name is Marissa, and I'm the dog mom around here. And this is Bela, my six-month-old golden retriever. And today, we will be doing her monthly pup date, which essentially is just a day in the life of my golden retriever at X months old. I started this with my Australian shepherd puppy, who is now two. We did hers for like her first year and a half every single month, just kind of doing a little day in the life of her life vlog. And I would show you guys the things that she knows, the things that she's struggling, just our day to day. Oh, good girl. We got the bells. So yes, these vlogs are basically to tell you what life is like with a six month old golden retriever. Say good morning, dad. Oh my goodness. Oh. If this is your first video here, welcome. If you love dog vlogs, dog hauls, training videos, pup dates like this one, I do Q and A's often, which we're actually throwing into this vlog. So in the past I've done the day in the life or like my monthly pup date and then that month's like Q and A. Today we're like morphing them into one video. So throughout today's vlog, I'm gonna be answering some of the questions y'all asked for her six month pup date. All while we have some fun and I show you her daily routine and like daily schedule and whatnot. Last week I posted the video completely outlining Bela's daily schedule. Oh, Jesus. So I broke it down like hour by hour what she does and whatnot. You're basically gonna be able to see that schedule in action in these vlogs and like every pup date and just see how our days are with them. So kicking us off, Bela gets up every morning at 8 a.m. or we get her up at 8 a.m. I will share little tidbits along the way because this is Freya and Bela's channel. So you're probably like, where the heck is Freya? Normally our mornings are all like together with all the dogs and whatnot. But when I do these monthly pup dates, it's specific to Bela. So you'll see Freya throughout, but a lot of the things that we're doing today are just with Bela so I can show you puppyhood with the golden retriever. I just wanted to throw that out there in case you're curious. So at 8 a.m. whenever we get Bela up and ready for the day, of course, I usually let her get her little zoomies out like she did. We always say hello and good morning. And then Cohen just took her potty for me because she rang the bells like a big girl. She's amazing. And I'm getting her treat pouch ready with her breakfast in it because every morning we take her on a walk and I like to bring her kibble as her treats to positively associate, to reinforce good behaviors, basically just be feeding her treats through our walks and whatnot. If we're working on heel, if we're working on, you know, meeting people, walking past people, if she sees something a little scary that she like is a little skittish for, I just want to like positively associate. So I really don't go anywhere without treats. <laughs> for my dogs and the treats are nine times out of 10 just kibble. I have like training treats and like treats that I give out for like funsies and whatnot. But usually if I'm training, I'm training with their kibble and I hand feed breakfast, which is what we're gonna do. We're gonna put her full breakfast scoop in here and get ready to go for a walk. I did get asked what Bela's favorite treats are because their golden is very picky. We are very lucky that Bela is not picky. <laughs> Her and Freya both are just very food motivated and they love food pretty much anything. But I will show you some of the other treats that we do have. And I re need to restock some. So this isn't everything. This is just what we have on hand right now. One being Kiwi Kitchens New Zealand in a bowl, raw freeze dried fish skin treats. These are super amazing because they're one ingredient only and it's just fish skin. There's literally nothing else and that's what you want. The less ingredients, the better and ingredients that you can pronounce and you know what they are, the better is what I'm looking for with dog treats. These can be a little smelly because of course they're fish skins, but the dogs love them. I also have raised right meat bites, lamb liver. Again, single ingredient treats. Like I really like that and that's what I always look for. This is literally just lamb liver. Doggos love it. These ones are kind of like crunchy, like chips, which I think is really interesting. One of my other favorite treats that I usually have on hand are Zook's minis. I use those a lot for training because they're mini and then you can really break them up in half and half and half and make them even minier. And then Bela can show you guys one other treat that we always have. Sit. 
good girl. We keep this treat jar at like our entry table and whatnot, mainly for training purposes. If we want to give treats whenever she rings the bells and stuff, especially when she was learning. But I have a whole bunch of like hard treats in here. These are from Crunchios. Anna doggos love them. They're amazing because they're like zero calories. So giving them a couple of them is not going to hurt them as much as like fatty treats. And this is just a baggie of what we have left actually of our Zooks minis. I know I said that we're going on a walk first thing in the morning and we are. However, I got a really good question that I want to show how I do on a walk. And it's hard for me to show a lot when I go on walks because normally we just walk around the neighborhood in the morning. So we're gonna take you guys to like a path. So that way I can really break down like our morning walks and like vlog for you guys so you can see everything. This isn't a question I got, but it is a DM I got or a comment or something. And someone said, I was much stricter on Freya than I was with Bela. And that's true because Freya was never allowed to do this. She was in the back all the time and she knows though like i would say off like she comes up here and i like let her sometimes especially to, like eat a pup cup or something and then i say off and she like jumps back but bayla doesn't know that off <gasps> I, that's just a coincidence <laughs> I'll take it though. Since we're going on the path, I'm using my really, really long lead. I forget exactly how long this is. It's like 30 feet or something. I don't know. But it's super helpful on walks like this to give her the freedom to go and sniff things while still being on leash technically because this path is not like off leash friendly. Like dogs should be leashed. I know y'all don't see a lot of Cohen on this channel, but this is Cohen. He's on my main channel. He has his own channel as well. He'll be helping me out today because a lot of times I film these when like he's off doing something at work or whatever, but he's with us all day today. So he's going to be my cameraman. lovely cameraman yeah. <laughs> so that I can show you guys all the fun things. Obviously this isn't like our normal walk because we're on a path and have like the long lead and stuff. But in general, I still work on kind of the same things with Bela, whether wherever we're walking. Letting her sniff, we could practice mini recall or just like check-ins. So a lot of the times I will reward any time that she's walking and turns back and looks at me, I'm gonna treat that and praise that because it's building good behaviors and good habits of that natural check-in, which will lead to really good recall in the future. We already passed two people on the trail, so we're also just practicing some etiquette of when we're passing people. And even right now, I've stopped moving and Bela has sat next to me. It's little things like this that I just wanna reward because she's choosing good behaviors and things that I want her to choose. Like, hey, mom stopped, I should stop too. Rather than mom stopped, mom, I wanna go. And she's like pulling me, trying to keep going. She knows that the way that we're gonna keep going is by her stopping with me first and then we'll go together. And those are the little things that she does because I've been rewarding those from the beginning. Go on a walk with your dog and have a goal of finding 10 things that your dog does well and just reward them without asking for them. Just look at their behaviors and reward 10 good things that they have chosen to do for you. And if you keep doing that, they will repeat the behaviors that are getting rewarded. And that's kind of your goal. Little recall games that you can play with your dog that aren't really recall, but just calling their name to get their attention and then moving away from them and kind of like running away. Dogs love to play chase, so let them chase you. Like build those habits of coming to you, being fun. Come on. pretty good she did kind of like at the end there because the guy said hello to me she kind of like wanted to go towards them and i just obviously kept her on the side of me if people ignore her she ignores them pretty well but with him talking i think she was like oh he wants to say hi like oh he has dogs i can play with kind of thing so we're working through all of that good girl Good girl. But in general, Bela's already trained to walk on my right side or like that's what we're really trying to focus on for heel work is on my right side because Freya's already trained on my left. But a tip in general is if you're passing dogs, I would recommend like getting between you and the dogs just in case, keep everybody safe.
I got asked how leash training is going in general and if I had any tips for dogs who love to sniff. I wanted to show you guys what I do with Bayla specifically. One, if she's pulling, <laughs> which is what she's doing right now, and with sniffing and stuff like that, because leash training is a never ending battle, I feel like. So when she started to pull, I stopped and that is how I've tried to help this. You can also try with like luring in general. Essentially, she's thinking that if she pulls, she can get wherever she wants to faster or if she wants something, pulling is the way to get it. So we're trying to switch that with her good girl. She was just pulling again, stopped her, she laid down. We're trying to teach her that the quickest way to get what she wants is to do what I want. Because every time she pulls, we stop moving, which defeats the purpose that she's trying to get at, which is to go quicker. So with sniffing, we can try a couple different things and I'll kind of show you. One would be luring away from it. So if your dog is sniffing and like super intensely like not paying attention to anything around you, I would always carry treats with you and basically put that treat in front of their little nose and kind of lure them away from it. But you also want to attach a cue with that so that way sooner or later you can lose the treats and use the cue. So that would be like, come on, this way, something, whatever you're wanting to use to get their attention. So I would say, Bela this way. Good girl, yes, good girl. And now we have left the sniff spot and she's still following me and I can still treat that and we move on. So whenever she stops, I would start doing that. Now, eventually when you're trying to get the treats away from that, you wanna just introduce the cue first without like luring. So then we would practice doing like, Bela this way. Good girl, yes, good girl. And eventually you can get to that. Consistency with the type of cue that you're using, whether it's this way, come here, whatever you wanna use, use it every time because it's just like any other trick or skill, like sit, lay down. So whatever word you're gonna be using, try to use it the same way every time and reward always whenever she's doing it. And they'll catch on pretty quickly that whatever you have is much more exciting than whatever they're sniffing. That's essentially what you're trying to do. So right now there's a lot of tension, not a lot, but there's tension on the leash. And if I tried to use my verbal cue and it wasn't working, here's what I would do is get that tension and slowly pull it. <laughs> she said, I found a stick. Come on. Good girl, yes. Good girl. So I'm not yanking her. I'm not trying to like pull her, but I'm just having a little bit of tension on that and moving away from her slowly, still using my cue. And then once she finally breaks from whatever she's interested on and focuses on me, 100% praise that. And she's still sitting here, which is super awesome. And then I can let her go and we keep walking. So there's a couple different things that you can do, but eventually you want to get to just the verbal cue where she's sniffing and we do this often, but like another reason why I have a long lead is because I'll let her sniff and I'll let the long lead go all the way out if I want to. And then once we reach the end of the long lead, I'll use my verbal cue and have her catch back up, wrap it back up. And basically it's just like this accordion game that we're playing the entire time on the trail. And that's how I can keep walking and not have to stop and wait for her, but she can sniff a little bit and then she catches up and we play this little yo-yo game. You want your sticks? Yeah. Okay. Come on. from our walk this morning and she is beat. Now typically our walks again are around the just neighborhood and whatnot and they're only about 30 minutes, 45 minutes sometimes. Today we were literally there for over an hour just because it was a longer trail and I stopped to like show you guys things. So normally we would be walking for 30 minutes and then we come home and we'll train for 30 minutes with the rest of her breakfast. Cause like I said, I have a full breakfast scoop in her treat pouch. We made it through like half of it, which is typical what I try to make it through on the walk. And then when we got home, I use the rest to hand feed and we work on skills. Sometimes we teach her new ones, sometimes we refresh ones. In these pup date vlogs, I always just show you guys what she already knows because if I'm teaching her a new skill, it's in a whole separate video because I want to show you guys how I teach her certain skills. But I of course got asked all the things that Bela knows right now. So I will just kind of go through her tricks. And there is one that we're working on. So I'll show you where we're at in that process. Touch. Good girl. Fall. There we go. I fall. There we go. Good girl. Yes. Lay down. 
Good girl. Yes. Sit. Yes. Good girl. Aside from verbal cues for all of her tricks, she does know them with hand signals as well, so she can do them without the verbal cue. Other commands or skills or tricks, whatever you want to like call it that she does know, is like go to her bed, go to her crate. We ask her to do that at night so she takes herself to her crate. She'll go to her bed. <laughs> but you guys can't see the end product, but she knows that. So a lot of like general commands. We're still working on things like off. She hasn't fully grasped that off means a lot of different things. Like we use it in the car, which is just like off of whatever you're on. Or if she jumps on a counter, off. If she jumps on us, off. So there's little places that she's much better at off than others. But we're working on that. She does really good with like in-home recall kind of thing. So of course like waiting and staying and then we walk away and ask her to come to us. We are still, you know, perfecting that for actual recall in terms of being off leash of public areas that is not like set in stone yet but in the house of course she's pretty good at that and then the trick that we have been working on which I'm filming a video on is center so having her like come and stand in between my legs Freya knows this one and I'm just trying to teach Bela it Bela center That would be our newest one that we're working on and then I recently saw a video of a dog and it's a golden who knows how to like take a selfie and they like jump on your back with like hands on your paws kind of thing when you're like bent down like this and then they like pose or whatever. I'm of course gonna teach Freya and Bela that but I feel like that'll take some time. One thing that I will say in terms of differences between Freya and Bela because I feel like I always get asked this is that at this age Freya knew a lot more tricks, a lot more skills, a lot more of those like obedience kind of like fun things to tell your dog to do than Bela does. There's nothing wrong with that because every dog is different. They're all gonna learn at different, you know, speeds and whatnot. But some of that is on my doing because with Freya, I focused a lot on those obedience skills and those tricks per se, where with Bela, I have had to kind of shift focus because she is a little bit different than Freya. Freya was like perfect in the home, never chewed up anything, was done with accidents in like two days, like literally an angel in that regard. She was still crazy puppy because Aussies and energy and whatnot but in terms of her like behavior in the home golden child so we could take a lot of time to train just like fun tricks and skills and whatnot now with Bela I feel like we've had to focus a lot on her just general behavior in the home or just behavior with other dogs with Freya with Naya with Kitty like there's a lot of other things that I've had to focus my attention on with her that I didn't have to with Freya like we are still dealing with counter surfing crazy with Bela but with Freya she never did that Bela is jumps all over her playpen if I leave her in there and she's already jumped out of it at one point. Freya never did that. So there's little things that we've decided to shift our focus on. So that is one of the reasons why Bela doesn't know as many tricks as Freya. She will get there. And we're like starting to do that now that her behaviors are getting like under control. Different dogs need different things and Bela needs us in a different way than Freya needs me and needed me when she was a puppy. So things just look a little bit different, but it's all okay. I just wanted to kind of address that. In terms of our normal day-to-day -day schedule, we are a little off because like I said, we spent about an hour, hour and a half on our walk. But typically at this point because we went on our half hour walk half hour training session this is like playtime and engaged playtime for an hour which means that like Cohen and I are involved with her we're playing fetch we're playing tug we're like one-on-one -on -one engaging with her duh however since we just went over schedule and whatnot I'm already gonna just jump to like her real dog 101 time because usually for the last hour that she's awake I let her and Freya play I let her regulate herself if she wants to go take a nap she can if she wants to chew a bone she can and so we're just gonna jump right into that hour but just know that typically we have like a buffer hour of walks, training, we go to play time, and then we go to disengage time where she can do whatever she wants. Are you ready to see Sissy? Okay. Say hi, Sissy.
sometimes we put her in her actual crate crate with like the cover down and whatnot for naps. Sometimes we leave her just in this little area for naps. It just depends. In the early, early days, like puppy puppy stage, we always did it in the crate because again, we're still trying to crate train and positively associate it. She's fine with the crate now and we've started to transition to have some naps throughout the day being out and about like this because we are slowly trying to not like wean off of the crate, but again, wean into settling herself outside of the crate because being able to take a nap in and around the house is kind of like a skill. If they're so used to being in like a dark, closed off crate like that's their safe space and stuff so they might not be able to settle outside so we practice a little bit of both that way she can sleep with the lights on or like music and being able to see things or see people and still being able to like be calm and chill out look who's up from her nap yeah see i'm still a little sleepy from this morning oh my goodness it is 2 p.m and bayla just got up from her nap so that means she's up for another three hours with us but typically in this first hour of being awake is our activity of the day which is my socialization activity of the day. It could be a lot of different things and I have an entire video on like what to socialize your dog with and it's lists upon lists upon lists of like things that you could be doing and exposing your dog to. Essentially the whole goal of this or the point of the activity of the day is to hit something on that list every day and you can always revisit. You don't want to just do it once. So today we're going to work on her art of doing nothing and like patio dog stuff because you also want to socialize your dog to do things that you do. That way they can live their life with you and be able to like do the things that you want them to do and for us it's a lot of patio time and going to get margaritas at mexican restaurants or whatever it may be kind of thing so we have to train and work on the art of doing nothing and sitting at a table and being able to watch people pass by or have food and her not jumping up on it so that's what we're doing today because it's so nice outside and we were outside for an hour and a half on her walk and then we actually took freya and naya on another hour and a half walk while bela was napping so we've been walking for like four hours already i feel like many a miles and it's beautiful outside and we're gonna go get some ice cream and she's exhausted still from the morning walk mental stimulation all the sniffies so much better than like running three miles let's go get some ice cream We're walking through the side little nature area of the park really quick and I wanted to answer another question that I get frequently asked which is like how much exercise does Freya and Bela get a day? It does change depending on what we do but I would say minimum they get like three to four and that's also like inside playtime, walks that we do, socialization activity, like I'm trying to think of all of it that we try to hit minimum but there are some days that they only get one but we try to give them enough physical stimulation every single day of course. There's a deer on the path. Oh, he sees us. <gasps> Hi. Mayla has no idea and doesn't care. Mm. Why do you always do that? There's another deer. Mayla literally does not care. <laughs> you trying to get her to see it. Baby, don't scare it. Oh. <laughs> he said, Mom, wait for me. Mayla has no clue. She's just worried about the stick. <laughs> She's just getting sick. I know. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. The high oh yes, come on, you good girl, oh that's a good girl. Since we're home from our activity of the day, we were able to socialize with racquetball players, basketball players, bikers, deer, trying to sit around doing nothing. She still needs some work with that, with us like eating ice cream and whatnot, but it was a good socialization activity. And now that we're home, since that activity is really, really engaged, and in the morning we do engage playtime, right now is Real Dog 101, back to kind of letting her do her own thing, which is really 
right now trying to like cool off on the kitchen floor while I make lunch for us. And if your dog makes good choices, choose to reward them. And so you can keep little treats around the house and just kind of like walk over and be like, good girl, give her a treat because she's doing the good thing. By not chewing up random stuff or being crazy, she's just trying to take a little nap after our little activity. It's a hit or miss of what she like chooses to do after the activities of the day. Sometimes her and Freya will go crazy and she has like zoomies, but Freya went on a walk this morning after Bela was down on her nap. So I think Freya's a little tired, but also she will not pass up an opportunity to nap with Cohen. So he's in the back room like laying down because he has to work later tonight. And so Freya most definitely will lay in the bed with him if he is laying in the bed and Bela's out here with me. <laughs> Good girl, you already know. Freya, go to your bed. Good girls. We had kind of a late lunch today because of all the hubbub that has been going on today, but we just finished eating, so it's now time for the dogs to eat. Because with Bela's new schedule and whatnot, we usually feed them starting at like 4 or 4.30 because Bela goes down for another nap at 5 p.m. And it just kind of depends. So I have talked before that every single meal we hand feed and train and whatnot, which was accurate, especially for Freya, but was accurate for Bela. But now we have kind of switched it up and sometimes we'll do some sort of a meal enrichment, mental enrichment kind of thing for for dinner or we'll hand feed but today has been an eventful day which they always are more eventful when we're filming and stuff just because it takes a little bit longer to do things we stay out a little bit longer I try to show more whatever so the girlies all the dogs were just sleeping and taking a nap because they're all exhausted which I love so today we're not gonna train we're just gonna have some meal enrichment time we have a ton of different toys that uh-uh good girl we have a ton of different toys that the dogs use for like mealtime enrichments. We have so many snuffle mats, puzzles, whatever. Today, they will be eating out of this Kong topple. It has a little hole here and it's weighted on the bottom. So it tips over, but it'll sit back up. And she's trying to get the little food out of that hole there. It unscrews, so you can fill it up. And this is what she's gonna be having today. But I do wanna share a hack with these. So essentially, if your dog's never used it before, we had to teach Bela how to use it. It was so cute, watching her little brain work and whatnot. But I would just use it as is. Pour your food in, put it in, let them play with it. How However, once they get really used to it and it starts to get a little bit easier, you can make it harder and harder by putting things inside the topple as well. Now, this is my first time doing this with Bela specifically, so I'm not going to make it too hard. So you can add two of them or one of them. I think I'm just going to start with the one since we've never had anything in here before. So if you can see it, there's that little toy that's in there. Good girl. Break. Did you mean? Good girl. And yes, I did change my outfit. Whenever she's down for naps is when I can get work done. And this last little section from 5 to 8 p.m., I was just hunkered down. So I like to be really comfy. Fred has to go potty. I like to be really comfy in my sweats and a flannel and a t-shirt. And I'm actually just going to keep this on to take Bela on her night walk, which she does every night. She's only up for one hour from 8 until 9 p.m., but that's not really the case. We'll get into that. She's already had dinner. Like, what do you do with this last hour? We go on a walk <laughs> for at least half of it from like 8 to 8.30 and typically Cohen will take you know Freya or Naya with me and I'll take Bela or vice versa whatever but he had to go into work a little bit earlier and work a little bit later tonight so it is just myself with Bela tonight and I prefer to wear crazy outfits that way I don't look approachable and no one will talk to me. Bela why do you have a sock? Why do you have two socks? Oh my goodness you know she is a sock thief. We moved our baby gate, which used to be here, blocking off both or really all the rooms to now for the bedroom. And no reason other than the fact that she steals clothes and everything. Like if we leave stuff out, she'll steal socks. I'm gonna take her potty first and then we'll take you on a walk. Since she did already have dinner, I just threw a few of my from treats from our treat jar into my treat pouch. Cause I want them, you know, in case of emergencies essentially. You know, I thought I would risk it for the biscuit and take them both. 
This is the first time I'm doing this. And I have Bela around my waist <laughs> and then Freya in hand. Wish me luck. I am so shocked and it might be because we had a good day today and everybody's tired, but this isn't that bad. Since Bela's around my waist, come on. She doesn't have as much length as Freya does. So she's trying to catch up with her. So she's just forever pulling and there's a motorcycle going by and Freya's gonna go crazy. Uh-uh, good girl. No. That was, that was okay, you did better. Good girl, yeah, good girl coming back though. Yeah, see this is why we work heel on both sides. Look at this. Bella, get down, oh yeah. Good girls, good girls. Oh, okay. Okay, goodness gracious y'all. I got asked if they ever get too riled up <laughs> and what do I do kind of thing. Most definitely all the time. And usually what I try to do is separate them physically if I need to. We're trying to work on like just a normal cue of like settle down, that's enough, that kind of thing. So that way verbally I can say that's enough and they'll settle. We're still working on it though. So right now I'm kind of like pulling them apart if needed. Good girls and praise when they're doing what I'm asking them to do, yeah. It's time for bed, huh? Yeah. It is past nine o'clock, it is 9.30. I said this before, but just everything takes longer on these days that like we record it because I'm recording it. And the walk took a lot longer because I wasn't expecting to take both of them. And I did try to use it as a really good training thing, which I think it was. It went really well, actually. But my hands were most definitely full, so it was really hard for me to vlog and have both of them. So I do apologize. But the walk went surprisingly well for having both of them for the first time by myself. Part of Bela's new schedule is pretty practicing getting ready for bed kind of like a little toddler we have like a little night routine and we're trying to settle for bed so at nine o'clock usually is when she goes down in her crate for bed but now that's when she comes into the bedroom with us and practices settling down so i brought bones in for both of them Freya's already chewing hers because she already knows the deal and she knows that like when we're in bed there's no playing it's chewing a bone hanging out kind of thing so Freya's chewing her bone but this is just her time to settle herself bring herself down yeah chew the bone sleep on the bed no playing because we do have to practice having those two especially in the same room without playing because all they want to do is play So you have to practice that especially at nighttime because they need to know when we get ready for bed It's zero play. We're hanging out. So you got to practice it. And Bela really wants Frey's bone. Bela, I brought you a bone in. You can go get your bone The day did just kind of lie by today, which I absolutely love But I didn't get to all the questions that I wanted to answer like throughout the vlog side of things So while we're settling I wanted to answer the last few questions that I had that you guys had asked that I wanted to try to answer in today's video Ever since getting Bail, I've gotten this question asked and I want to have a different video completely outlining how this works. But the question itself is, do I have a hard time dividing my attention between the two? And I will say it has changed with the stages. So yes and no. And then yes again, it is hard having two dogs, especially two different ages and two different trainings and with Cohen just out of surgery. So there are some things like right now we can't take both dogs to or go do with both dogs that we normally would. And it has been hard. It's been a little bit more time consuming because I have to do one with one and then do it again with the other. I can't wait until they do really well on walks so that way I can take them both on walks by myself and whatnot. Today was the start of that but it is hard and I want to outline that in a future video. She finally laid down and is chewing a bone. Good girls. I got asked this next question because I did this with Freya, so I'm assuming people are wanting to know if I'm doing the same thing with Bela. Am I waiting until like a year plus to spay Bela? And the answer is yes. I waited until Freya was a year and a half until I got her fixed, and I'm gonna be doing the same thing with Bela, and maybe even a little bit longer. Definitely do your own research, talk to your vets and whatnot, but the research that I've done has suggested that the bigger the dog, the longer you should wait, and especially after at least the first heat cycle, and then go get them spayed. So that's what we did with Freya, and since Bela's gonna be a little bit bigger than Freya, I don't know like timing wise how that'll work. I'll obviously talk with her vet and see what she recommends But I thought it worked really well waiting a year and a half with Freya. She's had no complications We also went with the laparoscopic spay which I have a whole vlog on and I will be definitely doing that with Bela It is more money, but it's less invasive and the recovery time is much shorter So that's kind of our spay plan for Bela And then the last question I'll answer is about doggy daycare And it is how often do I take Bela to doggy daycare and does she love it? So Bela does not go nearly as much as Freya did when she was a puppy. It's kind 
kind of like that little sister big sister thing with like kids because I kind of have a babysitter with Freya where sometimes at least now that she's older if I really need to get work done or something like I can just let them play and let them you know hang out and whatnot with me like still being watched but like they keep each other entertained when it was just Freya I would have to take her to doggy daycare more frequently because I just needed to get work done and I couldn't watch her all day but Bela does love it I posted on my Instagram pictures from like her first day going to doggy daycare and it was the cutest thing ever but she's only been probably three or four times it's just kind of worked out that someone is just always here like the way that Cohen and I's work schedules line up and someone's just always home so she just hasn't had to go to doggy daycare but a couple times she did and she did have fun and loved it she's left her bone and came to sit over here so I'm hoping she settles down now she won't sleep in here like I said but she'll just hang out in here with me probably for like an hour or so and then I'll take her into her crate so that way she can actually go to bed but I hope you guys enjoyed Bela's six month pup date I hope it was super informative or just helpful or entertaining or all of the above if you guys want to be a part of her next pup date and ask questions and have us answer them and whatnot make sure you follow me over on Instagram that's where I do all of the Q&A's and typically whatever questions I don't answer in the vlog I answer on my stories so you guys will always get the answers to something or I'll let you know that a video is coming or it's already been answered in a video or whatever because I try to be as helpful as possible so make sure you're following on Instagram if you want to ask some questions and no more answers <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next week in another dog vlog. Bye.